Let's continue our journey in dealing with the DDL alter command. We have already started DDL and we have completed the create command. Basically, SQL has four different sub languages. Number one, the data definition language DDL. Number two, the data manipulation language DML. Number three, the data control language DCL. And number four, the transaction control language TCL. We are now in data definition language DDL. And we know DDL contains create, alter, truncate, drop and rename commands. And in the previous lectures, we have seen elaborately about how to create a table without constraints and how to create a table with constraints. And we also have seen various constraints. Now let's turn our attention towards alter command. We know basically any DDL command that deals with the structure of the table. Let's now see why do we need alter command. Let's say we have created a table with five columns. And later, at some point of time, we realize that we need one more column. In such case, if we go and create a new table and if we try to copy the values from the old table to the new table, which is a tedious job. So there should exist some provision to add a new column to the existing table. So if we want to add a new column to the existing table, we can go for alter command. Let's see another scenario. We have a table where there exists a column with the name student name. And we have given the data type for that column as varchar of 50. Let's assume a new student has joined in our college or in a university where his name has 60 characters. But the database, what we have set, that column is given varchar of 50. It can accept only 50 characters. Will we be denying that student from getting admitted into the college? No. So administrator has the option to increase or modify the columns. So alter is also used for modifying the existing column of the table. At the same time, when we have the provision to add a new column to the table, we also have the provision to drop an existing column from the table. For dropping an existing column from the table, we can go for alter. Like I mentioned in one of the previous lectures, let's assume we have created a table and everything is perfect. Later we realized that we want to enforce some constraints. In such a case, will we be able to add a constraint to the existing table which already contains data? Of course, we can do that. So we can add a new constraint to the column of the table using alter command. When we have the ability to add a new constraint using alter, we will also be having a provision to drop an existing constraint from the column of the table. So alter is basically used for adding a new column to the table, modifying the existing column of the table, dropping an existing column from the table, adding a new constraint to the column of the table and dropping an existing constraint from the column of the table. Let's see one by one now. Let's start with the first one, adding a new column to the table. We know we are not going to create a table, rather we are going to alter the existing table. So the command that we are going to use here is alter. Alter is the keyword. Table, which object I am going to alter? It's table, right? So alter table, table name. So the syntax goes like this, alter table, the table name, which is the user defined one, I'm going to add a new column, right? So I'm required to use the keyword add column name. That is the new column name, which we are going to add and the data type. So let's see one example. Alter table student add age integer. What do we mean by this? You see how easy it is like an English statement. SQL queries are like English statements. That's what one of the fascinating features about SQL and that's why it's very easy to learn this language. Alter table student add age integer. It means we are going to alter the existing table student by adding a new column age with the data type integer. Let's say we have the table student like this which contains only two columns ID and name. After executing this command how the table looks like? The table looks like this. The same table student where the first column is id, where the second column is name, but now we can see a new column is inserted which is age because that is what we have instructed here. We are adding age and what data type it will accept? Integer data type. So from this we have witnessed that we can add a new column to the existing table using alter. Let's see the second scenario which is modifying the existing column. So how to do that? The syntax is again the same alter table, table name, alter, use one more time the same keyword alter, column, what we are going to alter? We are going to alter a column, which column? The column name and what is the new data type we are going to give? We know variety of databases are there, Microsoft SQL Server, Sybase, Informix, IBM's DB2 and many more. SQL is supported in variety of platforms with some minor changes. 
if this command is not working, then try this command. Alter table, table name. Instead of alter, try modify column, column name, data type. It differs from software to software. I request you to apply your due diligence in order to find out which keywords are differing from software to software. Anyway, most of the things will be the same. This is the syntax for modifying the existing column using alter. Let's see an example now. I'm going to alter the table student. I'm going to alter the column name with a new data type varchar of 50. So let's see an example. Let's say there exists a student table with ID as the first column and name as the second column. After executing this command, we will have the same table student with ID as the first column and name as the second column. Now what's the difference? Let's assume previously it was varchar of 40. Now this will be varchar of 50. That's the difference. When you describe the table and see, you will see the difference. Don't worry about this now. When we are in the hands-on session, at that time, I will show you this difference. So we are done with adding a new column and modifying the existing column. Now let's see the third scenario, dropping an existing column. It means there exists a table and there exists a column and we are going to drop that column from the table. Why do we need to do this? As a database administrator, we realize that this column is no more needed and it is unnecessarily consuming the memory. So in such case, we can remove the column. But please be ensured that DDL commands are auto-committed and cannot be rolled back. Let's proceed with this now. How to drop an existing column? Using the same alter command, alter, table, table name. I'm gonna drop. I'm not gonna add, rather I'm going to drop. Drop, column, column name. Let's see an example. Alter table student, drop, keyword column. What is the name of the column I'm gonna drop? Name. Name is the name of the column that I'm going to drop. It means there exists a table student with the column name. Let's see it now. There exists a student table with ID as the first column and name as the second column. And I'm going to drop the column name. So once I execute this DDL command, my table now looks like this. Student, which contains only ID column. And there will be no name column because we have already dropped that column using alter command. Let's now see the fourth scenario adding a new constraint to the column. It means there exists a table already. There may be data populated into the table or may not be, but still we can alter the table by adding a new constraint. Just see here, alter, table, table name, add. Add keyword is used to add a constraint as well as add a new column. Add, constraint, keyword, the name of the constraint. We can give any name for this. This is also user defined like the table name. Then constraint of column 1 comma column 2 comma up to dot 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 semicolon. Remember, we can give this constraint for multiple columns also. In case you want to enforce a constraint for a specific column or only one column, just use that particular column name alone. Let's see the example. It will be easy for you to understand. See, I am going to alter the table student by adding a constraint and this is the constraint name pk underscore id. This is the constraint name. And what constraint I am going to enforce? Primary key for which column? ID column. Now you may be asking why we are giving this keyword. This has some significance. I will explain this shortly. So just see, after executing this command, what happens to the table? Let's assume the table is actually like this. Student table which contains ID and name. Now what I am going to do? I am going to alter the table student that is this table by adding a constraint PKID that is the primary key for which column? ID column. So I'm going to enforce primary key for this column. So what happens once I execute this alter command? Now my ID column is going to be enforced with primary key constraint. Can you see an underline here? So this is the primary key constraint. Now you may be asking me a question. What if this column already has a duplicate value and we try to enforce a primary key constraint on the column which already contains either duplicate values or null values? In such case, adding a constraint will not be accepted because that column is not eligible for adding this constraint. How to rectify this? We are required to remove the null and the duplicate entries first before trying this alter command. So we have learned how to add a new constraint to the column also. And now we will see how to drop an existing constraint from the column. And the syntax goes like this. Alter, table, table name, drop, constraint, constraint name. And the example is, alter table student, drop, constraint, constraint name. I hope now you can recollect why we need to provide a constraint name. In the previous slide, we had a constraint name. So these constraint names are helpful 
in order to add the constraint and drop the constraint. What we are doing here? We are dropping the constraint PKID from the student table from which column? I need not mention that because the constraint name is PKID, we know PKID is linked to which column? It is ID column in our previous example. So let's assume PK underscore ID is actually for this column, which is a primary key constraint, which is already enforced on this column. When I execute this command, alter table student drop constraint PK ID. Now this particular constraint will be removed from this table. Can you see here? There is no underline. It means the primary key constraint has been dropped from this column. And that's it guys. In this presentation, we have seen how to add a column to the existing table, how to drop a column from the existing table, how to modify a column in the table, how to add a constraint and drop a constraint. And these can be done using the alter DDL command. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.